Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And before I get this video started, make sure you guys grab your snacks, popcorn, drinks, tea, coffee, whatever it is, because this is going to be a longer video. So I have a great article here for you guys from Fierce Wireless. I will leave a link to it in the description so you guys can check it out for those of you who haven't seen it. So this is my only concern with T-Mobile. And I've stated this before. But I truly believe that they should highly value the partnerships with both Nokia and Ericsson because of the pace of their growth. Now, it's, it's clearly a good thing, but they are still competing aggressively like a company that's starting from scratch. Right. The T-Mobile of 2012, 2013, they're competing like that in 2023 still. So they continue loading up the network at a fast clip. And you guys will see that once Q4 numbers launch, we will get I'm very confident because T-Mobile by history has done this. We will get preliminary Q4 numbers early January and then we will have the official earnings call take place towards the end of January. They continue loading up the network at a massive clip to where it really requires them to have two vendors because the vendors have to keep up, right? Right now, the next step to the T-Mobile network is the C-band and DoD. That's very clear because that's already in the planning stages. They told us they would take out some capital. You know, that's some of the language that they've been using. When it comes to millimeter wave... We have not heard them talk about millimeter wave in the same manner. We have not heard them say, okay, we're going to carve out capital for this this year. We're going to do that. No, it's all been deflecting. It's all been testing. We're looking at it. We're studying. That's all we've heard so far. So they're not, they're not deploying. As far as we know right now, they're not deploying any millimeter wave in 2024 unless they change their tune in these next few quarters. For now, it's all about the eyes are on C-band and DOD. What's the plan? What's the, what's the strategic uh, deployment schedule looking like? When are they going to start? Those are some of the questions that we should hear soon. But that's my concern, right? They continue loading up the network, however you look at it. Wireless, fixed wireless, doesn't matter. They're loading up. They know how to sell the product and services that they offer. And it's a good thing. But from a network perspective, it could be a bad thing. And that's my only concern. And, and, and before we get into 2024, we're only a few weeks away. That's, that's something that I wanted to list of my concern moving forward into 2024. You guys have heard me talk about T-Mobile in the M&A space. You've heard me talk about them having a big 2024 in terms of continuing to grow, which is the negative that I'm talking about in this video. But eventually, the network can only take so much. You got to remember, they've been, uh, they've been growing and, and talking about 5G since 2020. So their 2.5 is somewhat saturated. It's still performing great, but they already have a lot of usage on that side of the network. So as they continue their, their path to growing as fast as they have been, you know, eventually... And I'm not talking about just next year. This could take till 2025, 2026. But we saw this happen during LTE. Towards the end of LTE, I remember 2017, 2018, that network was drastically slower. And that was over several different markets that I, that I, that I tested. I tested it around that time in Phoenix. I went to Vegas. I went to San Diego. Here, it was drastically slower. I couldn't even use T-Mobile on the Strip. And the reason I know, because I checked the differences, right? I was in Vegas and this was, this was outside. I was doing below a megabit per second when the strip was packed at its peak. At 5 a.m., same area, I did 300 megabits per second. So the network was just totally overloaded. Even with the assets they had back then, they had AWS at 20 megahertz. They had PCS at 20 megahertz. They had band, band 12 at 5 megahertz. Even with those assets and, and the, the, the decent density that they had, they still couldn't manage the crowd. 
And it, and it started to trickle here into El Paso. And that's when I left T-Mobile. The, the Volte calls were starting to sound choppy and dropping. Data speeds just got too slow. Couldn't even stream. YouTube was buffering. It was really that bad. So I just don't want that to happen again. And right now we got a different type of monster of a usage coming from FWA. And they continue selling that. So right now, it's, it's, it's good, right? We, we don't notice anything. 2024, they will continue striving. They will continue growing the capacity. 10 gig circuits are going into gr in the ground. So that's all good. And that's what's needed for them to continue growing the way that they have been. And there's no slowdown in sight. I'm hearing 2024 is already uh, setting up to be a big year. They will continue to compete just like they have in, in this year and last year. And if you look at their guidance, you shouldn't think any otherwise. Their guidance shows you that they're going, they're going to continue growing this company. And that's in rural, enterprise, small business, uh, home broadband, wireless, whatever, metro. They are going to continue growing this company at the same clip. They're, they're, they're guiding anywhere from three to four million every single year so far. 2020, 2021, 22, 23. I don't see that being any different in 24. And I don't see that being any different in 2025. Again, I'm speculating because no guidance has been given. But that's just, you know, they, they've been consistent on that. So why change now? Right? That's just that's just a fact. Look at the numbers. Look at their quarterly earnings uh, numbers. It's all there. It's really all there. They have been growing uh, bigger than, than any other carrier right now, any other uh, mobile network operator. And like I said, they're still operating like they're a carrier that's that's barely getting into the space. Like Dish, right? Dish is brand new. They're trying to grow. They're trying to be disruptive. Hasn't worked for them. But T-Mobile, it's clearly working. You know, so yes, we acknowledge that they're more expensive now, that they've made some moves that that are carrier like, but they still compete aggressively. They still compete very smartly. It has not stopped them from, from adding customers to the network at a, at an insane clip. And again, at this pace, I got to say it, if they continue to, to grow their postpaid subs at this pace, eventually they're going to pass Verizon as the overall postpaid leader in the market. Maybe not in total subs, but postpaid specifically, they're going to surpass Verizon eventually. I think right now the last time I checked, Verizon was like at 91 million and, and T-Mobile was at 87 million. So they're closing in. They're closing in very quickly. And, and it's, it's good to see because that puts more pressure on Verizon. If T-Mobile eventually surpasses them, they're going to claim number one postpaid carrier, number one 5G network. I mean, that's not something you really want to happen. But at this current, like I said, this current projections and trajectory, Verizon's heading down the wrong path. It, the, could they turn it around? Yes. But right now, there's just nothing that would make us believe otherwise. And that's the big problem for Verizon. But T-Mobile, they continue growing. And eventually, the network, you know, the network is going to have a tougher time. It's going to eventually slow down. Yes, I know in some other markets they're speeding up, but, you know, the spectrum position is different per per market. Like mine is very fragmented. I don't have 180 megahertz of N41. And even with the uh, C-band and DOD, I don't get to that total spectrum of mid-band versus, say, you know, uh, uh, Houston or, or, or Dallas from what I've seen, right? So... Those places are probably going to have faster speeds versus my market for, for the duration of 5G. You know, unless they all of a sudden decide to throw millimeter wave into this market, I don't see that changing. And I've stated this before in previous videos, their densification here really didn't improve much with the spring keep sites. They got like maybe in the city, like maybe f four or five spring keep sites and that's it. You know, that goes to show you that they were already much more denser than the Sprint network ever was. And moving forward to really to really uh, 
make my concerns go away, I really need to see them really build further densification. I need to see CRAN going up in, in, in very specific locations. I would like to see a few more towers here and there, some further densification, uh, maybe a few more for, for sectors. They've done that a lot in this market. So that's just some of the things that I want to see, especially as they continue growing the market share, as they continue adding fixed wireless access customers in a market that's very fragmented and that only has 80 megahertz of N41, they continue adding fixed wireless access customers and they continue slamming the network with wireless customers. You know, it's just a fact. I mean, I'm not lying. You can see it in the quarterly numbers. And this Q4 is going to be another big quarter for them. So that's just something that I wanted to share in this video today. Um, just to, That's my only concern is them loading up the network left and right. And they are good at doing it. It's not like they're slowing down. They continue accelerating and 2024 doesn't look any different. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you are new to this video, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, follow the social media outlets. This is Tyrone with Tech Life. See y'all in the next one. Peace.